Should you join the Mastodon revolution, an open source alternative to mainstream social media? In this video, I'll share my experiences with the social network. Hello, Russell here for This Week in IT, where we look at the tech issues that matter to you. If you'd like to see these videos every week, then I'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button and don't forget to check the bell notification to make sure that you don't miss out on any of our weekly uploads. So Mastodon, just in case you haven't heard of it already, is a decentralized social network. Now, what does that mean exactly? Well, if you take something like Twitter or Facebook, it's based on a single website or series of servers that are controlled by one person, one entity, of course in the case of Twitter, Elon Musk, and you have to follow those rules and regulations set out by that company or person. Now, Mastodon works on a completely different basis where any individual can essentially set up a Mastodon server and you have to follow the rules and policies set out by that person. So you can think of it a little bit like a, an email service where you might sign up for Outlook.com or Gmail, but it doesn't stop you necessarily communicating from anybody who has a Gmail address if you're on Outlook. And that's kind of the principle of Mastodon. So why has this idea of a decentralized social network suddenly become so popular. Francis, you're fired. See ya. Well, I don't want to cover all of the fuss and news that's been surrounding Twitter over the last few months, but I think you're pretty well aware of what's going on with Twitter at the moment and Elon Musk. Now, he, of course, has driven a lot of users away from Twitter, and those people are looking for alternatives for a micro-blogging service, and that's where Mastodon steps in. Now, it's not a new thing. It's been around since 2016. It's open source, and lots of users have decided to set up accounts on Mastodon as an alternative to Twitter. So just to give you an idea of what's going on with Mastodon in terms of its popularity growth, if you look at the beginning of October, it had about 300,000 on average monthly active users. And if you look at the same figures for the end of November, that figure is almost 2.5 million. And to make things even worse, a few days ago, Elon Musk banned any links to other social networks or competing social networks on Twitter. So of course that included Mastodon, so you couldn't link to a Mastodon user, for instance. But since then, Elon has, of course, reversed that decision because it just made things even worse for Twitter. Okay, so now we understand what Mastodon is and how it works. How do we sign up? Well, the first thing that you need to do is to create an account on an instance, they're called, but essentially a server. So the first thing to do is you need to find a server. So you can go to joinmastodon.org and you can find a server there. Now you can find servers primarily based on region and then scroll through that list of servers to find a community that's of interest to you. So there are communities based around tech, around the arts, around news. Now, when you found a server, it's important that you learn more about it and you read the rules, regulations and policies for that particular server to make sure that it's going to meet your needs. There's, of course, no point moving away from Twitter if the person running that Mastodon instance has an even more disagreeable set of policies. That's very unlikely to be the case. But you can have a look there and see what you can find. Now, one of the problems I had with this was finding a server that would actually allow new accounts. Because these instances are run by, you know, mainly individuals, but sometimes companies, they need to supply the necessary resources to support that server infrastructure. So many of them are now limiting the number of users that they will allow to sign up. And for some really popular instances, they have now just closed new signups. So you need to look through, find what you want, and then see if you can actually create an account there. And this actually took me some time to go through all of the available servers in a particular region, find what I wanted, and then actually have the ability to sign up. Now, as I said before, anybody can set up a Mastodon instance, but on the joinmastodon.org website, these are instances that essentially Mastodon have accepted as meeting four basic requirements. Now, the first one is that there should be active moderation on the site against things like sexism. The second is that the server should be backed up daily. The third is that there should be at least one person who has emergency access to the server. And finally, whoever's running the server should give all users at least three months warning if they plan to close it down. 
So in order to be listed on the Join Mastodon site, you need to meet those four basic requirements. And I think it's a good starting point. Of course, there are other servers available that you might be able to find just by searching the internet, but it doesn't mean to say that they meet these requirements. They may well do, they may go even further. But this is a good starting point to search for a Mastodon instance. So once you've found an instance, you're happy with the community, with the policies of the server, then you can create an account. I just had to confirm my email address, set a password, and that's it. I was able to log in. Now on the desktop, there's no actual Mastodon application. So you can just use it in a browser or you can set up a progressive web app if you're using something like Chrome or Edge. If you want to use it on iOS and Android, there's no official Mastodon app. But if you search for Mastodon in the App Store, you'll find lots of third-party apps that you can use there. So once you're logged in, of course, you can set basic things about your profile, you know, like a bio and a headshot and a banner, if you like, just like you do on Twitter. But then it's all about, of course, finding other users that you're going to interact with. Now, this you can do really just by searching. So for instance, I added Paul Farot, amazingly, there on Mastodon. Uh, I didn't expect to find him there. The other way that you can find interesting information there is to search and follow hashtags. So for instance, I searched for PowerShell and followed it, for Azure and AWS, and you can see what's going on there. The great thing about these searches for hashtags, it also gives you an indication of the activity over time. You know, is it trending right now? Uh, or is it just flat lines? So that's always quite interesting before you decide to follow anything. And in this respect, it's relatively easy to use. But I want to tell you a couple of things about it that you really need to think about before you decide to actually step into the whole Mastodon world. The first thing is the sign-up process is just too difficult. Trying to find a server and the community that you want to join, you need to search by region, and then you just scroll through the available servers. It doesn't really give you the ability to search any further. One of the things that Mastodon is not designed to do is to serve up adverts, and most servers, they ban any kind of advertising. And of course, the only way that you can really drive and control a conversation is to set up your own Mastodon instance, but obviously there are going to be costs involved in that. One of the really annoying things, I think, about Mastodon is going to be a real problem for the average user, is that before you can sign into it, you need to know the user URL or at least the very name of the Mastodon instance that you belong to. It should be enough just to type in your Mastodon username and password to sign in, but unfortunately that's not the case at the moment. There are free pieces of information that you need to do that. And I think also along with the lack of searchability for Mastodon instances, that's a real usability issue at this stage. All of the apps that are available seem to be third party. Again, that's maybe a bit of a trust issue for users coming into this. And what happens if a Mastodon instance goes down? Assumably your presence on the platform is then lost. Or what if the person who runs that server decides to shut it down? Does that mean all of your history, all of the presence, all of the followers that you've built up on the platform are simply lost? As far as I can work out, that's the case. But let me know in the comments below if you understand something different about how this all works. Another potential disadvantage is for companies that are using third-party tools like Hootsuite, for instance, to distribute social media posts across many different networks. So they might have one post, for instance, that they want to put out to Twitter, to Facebook, to LinkedIn. And as far as I know, those tools don't support Mastodon at this stage. So in my opinion at the moment, from what I've seen of this, it's a little bit of a curiosity. And for people who don't necessarily have tech skills and can understand the whole concept of this decentralized service, the disadvantages of it outweigh any potential advantages. I'd probably recommend that most people stick with something like Twitter at this stage, but I'm really interested to see how Mastodon develops and whether they can make it easier to use. But by all means, if you have some time over the Christmas period, maybe you want to escape the family or whatever, for whatever reason you want to play around with this, then it's definitely something that's worth having a look at. So 
let me know what you think about Mastodon in the comments below. Have you signed up for an account? Do you have any experience with the platform? And how do you think it compares to a centralized service like Twitter in terms of usability? If you found this video useful, then I'd really appreciate it if you give it a like, because it helps to get more people to see it on YouTube. And before I go, I'm gonna put a video up on the screen now that you also might find interesting. So have a great Christmas, that's it from me for this week, and I will see you in the new year.